Today on Sugar Spun Run, I'll be showing you how to make a braided sweet bread. Hey Sugar Spun Bakers, Sam here. I know that baking with yeast intimidates a lot of you out there. Not everybody, but quite a few. It used to intimidate me, and if a recipe called for yeast, I just stayed away. Well today, I am going to show you step by step how to make a loaf of perfect braided sweet bread. It is made with yeast, but I think you'll find it's much easier than you ever previously thought. Now to get started, you are going to want to grab one cup of whole milk and we are going to add to this one third cup of water. Anytime you're baking with yeast, you need to activate it with a warm liquid. So we're going to heat together our milk and our water until it's between 110 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Once your liquid is at temperature, add it to a large mixing bowl. I'm going to be making today's recipe in my trusty stand mixer. But this recipe can also be made by hand and I've included notes in the printable recipe on how to do so. Now you need to add your yeast to your warm liquid. We'll be using two and one fourth teaspoon of active dry yeast. Sprinkle that evenly over the milk. And we're also going to be adding just a teaspoon of granulated sugar just to help that yeast grow. Briefly stir everything together. Now let this sit for about five to 10 minutes until your yeast has activated. You'll know your yeast is activated because you'll have a nice foamy cap on top of your liquid. If your yeast hasn't activated within five to 10 minutes, most likely it was either dead, maybe your yeast was expired, or your liquid was too hot and killed your yeast, or it was too cold and just didn't have enough heat or warmth to activate that yeast. Either way, if your mixture doesn't look like this after 10 minutes, you need to toss it out and start over. Once your yeast is nice and foamy, we'll add one third cup of granulated sugar, two teaspoons of salt, five tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. We're also going to be adding one large egg and one large egg yolk. We're going to save that extra egg white for brushing on top of the bread. We're going to need about four to five cups of either all-purpose flour or bread flour for today's recipe, but for now we're just going to be adding two cups into our mixture. And clearly this is not the proper way to measure flour, but you only need approximately two cups at this point. Now stir everything together until it's well combined. I don't like to use my dough hook at this point just because it has trouble reaching the sides of the bowl. Now at this point, I'm going to switch over to my dough hook attachment. Again, if you don't have one, you can certainly do this by hand instead. It just requires a little bit more muscle. Now before we started, I had measured out five cups of flour. We've added about two. We are just going to turn our mixer to low speed and add additional flour as needed. It's very possible that you might need more or less flour than I use. We are going to be judging based off the consistency of the dough, not based off a specific amount of flour. If your dough hook is having trouble getting that flour incorporated, you should pause and use your spatula to just bring everything together. So how do you know when you've added enough flour? We are going to be able to tell completely based off consistency. What we are looking for is a dough that is clinging to itself. It's clinging to that dough hook, or if you're mixing by hand, it's clinging to the spoon or spatula that you're using. It's pulling away from the sides of the dough. It's going to get a smooth and elastic consistency. And when you touch it, it'll be a little bit sticky, but it shouldn't be so sticky that you wouldn't be able to manage it. It should be slightly tacky, I would say. We're not quite there yet. This is still too sticky, so I'm going to just keep adding more flour. So this is a pretty good consistency at this point. I'm not going to add any more flour, but it's still not quite as smooth and elastic as I'd like it to be. Now at this point, I'm just going to continue to knead it using my mixer for about five minutes. If you're doing this by hand, you would just transfer your dough to a lightly floured surface and knead by hand for about five to 10 minutes or until it's smooth and elastic. Once your dough is nice and smooth, we're going to transfer this to a clean, lightly oiled bowl. And we'll turn the dough so that the entire surface is covered with a thin coating of oil. We'll cover the bowl tightly with plastic wrap and we'll put this in a warm draft free place for it to rise until it's doubled in size. This is usually about one to two hours. When your dough has doubled, gently deflate it and transfer it to a clean surface. 
Now I'll generally use a little bit of flour on my hands and on the surface if the dough's sticky, but don't go overboard or it's going to make the dough too tough to manage and too tough to braid. Now we'll divide this into four even pieces and we'll roll each of these pieces into a 15 inch long rope. Now, if you were only doing a three piece braid, you would just want three pieces instead of four. Now, I like to place each of these ropes directly on the baking sheet that I'm going to be baking the bread on. Braiding it there just makes it easier. You don't have to worry about transferring it and messing up that pretty braid. My sister's been helping me in the kitchen a lot recently, and she used to be a sandwich artist who used to braid bread very often. She insisted that I do a four-piece braid instead because it's prettier, so let me show you exactly how we do this. Let me go ahead and bring this camera around behind me so you can see how I'm doing this from my point of view. Lay these four ropes next to each other, and I originally put parchment paper on this baking sheet. That's actually makes it a pain to work with, so I recommend not using parchment paper here. We're going to be starting at the center of the bread rather than the top. Start with your rightmost piece all the way over on the right and fold that over the piece next to it and then under the piece next to that. And then over the last piece. Pull this down a little bit. Now we're just going to repeat this process, weaving the bread exactly the same way, always starting with the piece furthest to the right. So this will go over and then under and then over. And if your bread is a little bit sticky, you can dust it with a little bit of flour. And once you've gotten to the end of your bread, I like to just sort of squish the pieces together and then we'll fold them underneath. Now I'll spin that pan around and we are going to do the exact same thing. Again, starting with the strand all the way on the right, folding this over the piece beside it, then under the piece beside that. And then over once more. Pull that down a little bit. And we'll repeat the process starting all the way on the right. Once again, when you get to the end, just kind of squish those pieces together when you can't braid any further and tuck them under. Now we'll cover this bread with plastic wrap and we're going to let it rise again in a warm draft free place for about 30 to 40 minutes. While that bread is rising, you can go ahead and preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So after at least 30 minutes, your bread should have risen. So we can go ahead and uncover this carefully. And remember that egg white that we saved from earlier? I'm going to use this to just gently brush over the surface of the bread. Now, if you used an egg wash instead, which is one whole egg mixed with a little bit of water, your bread will get a more golden color on top, but I don't like to waste ingredients, so we're just gonna use the egg white. And be gentle because you don't wanna deflate your bread. Now, this is a sweet bread, so we are going to generously sprinkle the top with granulated sugar. I'm actually using a coarse turbinado sugar today. I like the extra texture that it adds, it gives it a little bit of crunch, but regular granulated sugar will work just as well. You guys know I don't mess around when it comes to sugar. Now let's take this over to our 375 degree Fahrenheit preheated oven, where it's going to need to bake for about 20 minutes. All right, I braided my bread a little bit unevenly, so hopefully you did a better job than I did. But if I do say so myself, it's still pretty beautiful. So let's go ahead and look at the interior. This bread is my all time favorite. It is so light and fluffy and it has just the right amount of sweetness. I can't wait for you to try this one out and let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm.